little loud right now because I'm at the train station. You can see that there's a train right there and I have my phone, just my phone, and you can see that my phone is running GTA 5. Now it's lagging a little because obviously I'm at the train station. You can see with just my finger and once again I don't have anything, it's not a laptop, it's just a phone, but press the screen and I fire my gun and I can aim around and we can play GTA 5, Grand Theft Auto 5 on our phones in a train station away from home. That's pretty cool. Hey there, I'm Sourcemake, otherwise known as Delocalized, and in this video we are going to show how the Steam Link app plus a VPN means that we can play our PC games on our phone anywhere in the world, and it's really cool. So in this video we are going to give a brief introduction to the topic, I'm going to talk about what the Steam Link app actually is, we're going to go through a flow diagram to see how this actually works, and then we're going to look at why a VPN is going to help us play our games anywhere in the world and not just at our home. And then I'm going to show you the hardware setup to see what we actually need to make this thing happen. And then we're going to go through the new flow diagram, which gets just a teeny bit more complicated. You can see that there are a lot of lines there. And after this, I'm going to show you like one or two minutes of actual gameplay of me playing a game on my phone away from home. So you could see what it's actually like. That's going to be really cool. Actually stick around for that. And we're going to conclude the video with just a couple of steps that I want you to follow after this to see where we go next. So all of these resources, this webpage is going to be on my website. There's going to be a link to this webpage below this video. If you click below this video, you get to this webpage and you can read along if you want to do that yourself. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So when it comes to playing video games, the best option is usually to play the games on a desktop computer, which has a really nice graphics card and some really nice hardware so that the games actually have some power to run on. But when away from home, the next best option that people usually follow are playing with a laptop, which is a little bit big to carry around and usually they get overheated and they kind of cost a lot to buy a laptop just to play games. I'm, it's not really the best option. Some people also use handheld consoles like Nintendo DS's, but that has like a specific subset of games. And some people just use their mobile phones and tablets with regular apps, which is cool. I use that too, but you know, sometimes we want to play actual hardcore PC games. And for that, we can use the Steam Link app and a little bit of creativity. So what is the Steam Link app, you ask? Well, if you don't know, Steam is the leading video game distribution software and store for the PC gaming. And what this means is basically if you want to play a game on your computer, what you want to do is you want to buy the game on Steam and you want to download the game from Steam because that's like the best way to do it. And to compare this um, as with an analogy, you would use the Apple App Store if you wanted to buy an app for your iPhone, right? Or if you wanted to play a game on an Android phone, you would go to the Google Play Store. Steam is kind of like that for computers. Now, I don't want to go into the Steam Link. It's kind of a physical device that does the same thing as the Steam Link app. But what the Steam Link app does is it's an app available for Android devices. As of this video, it might come out for iOS in the future. And it lets you stream Steam games from your computer to your phone or tablet. So what that means is the game is running on your computer and then you get it streamed onto your phone so you can see it on your phone. And this is supposed to be a local network. So let's say my computer is running in the den of my house. Then if I go and bring my phone to like my bedroom or to the living room or to the kitchen, I can have the game running on my computer that's in my den and I can still see what's going on on my actual phone, which is kind of useful. So at home, it's really cool. So let's just see how this works. So you can see this diagram right here. As I just said, we've got a computer with Steam running on it and it's got a game running on it right now. And the video audio for the game, which happens to be like the frames that you see or the sound effects that you hear, the music, all of that stuff gets packaged up and it gets sent as data to the router for our home. And then it gets sent to our phone, to the Steam Link app. So that's how we see what we see on the phone. And then let's say some bad guy comes up to us and we need to shoot him or we need to jump or something like that. Then we would use a controller like this to actually provide some input, like to move, jump, aim, etc., cetera, um, from the controller to the Steam Link app. And then the phone would actually send that input to the router, which gets sent back to the computer which is actually like a simple process. You'll see it gets a little more complicated later, but as long as you have like good Wi-Fi, you can actually like do some really reliable 
gaming on your phone if you're at home. But this is supposed to all happen on the same Wi-Fi, the same network. What happens if you want to play games on our phone and we're not at home? Well, you can use a VPN to handle that. Now, I have blog posts and videos on what VPNs and how the internet works are. So if you're kind of new to that and you want to learn about it, below this video, I'll have some links that will take you to those pages or those videos so you can follow along. But basically what a VPN is going to do is it's going to act as the middleman to actually tell the Steam Link app that we're actually home and not away from home. So, so we'll see how this works. But first, let's go through the hardware that we're going to need for this kind of setup. So we need a computer with Steam running on it and some games, obviously. Hopefully it's a desktop or a laptop with a nice graphics card, as I said. We need a VPN, which is just some form of a computer that we can route traffic through that lives on our home network. So this could be like some simple, small, tiny Raspberry Pi, or it could even be software that's running on your gaming desktop. And in my case, I just use an old laptop that it was, I just had laying around that I configured to be the VPN server. And the next thing that we need is obviously an Android device to stream our games onto that we can actually see the games on our screen. And finally, we need some Bluetooth input. So that means that we need to actually have some way for our character to jump, right? So we would need just like a controller. Or, and, and the types of controllers that you can use are the official Steam controller, which I have right here. And we have, you could also use an Xbox or PlayStation controller. Or you could even use a keyboard or mouse, I guess. I haven't tested these out, but I, I, I think it's theoretically possible. I don't see why it wouldn't work. So for my personal setup, you can see I have my desktop right here. My graphics card is a GTX 1060, I think. And this is a picture from when I built it like a year and a half ago. This is my VPN right here, my VPN server. It's just an old laptop that I have sitting around that is plugged into the router. And it's just like sitting in a corner in my den. I, I just leave it turned on. And you can see my phone and my Steam controller. So this stuff was actually pretty cheap. Um, this VPN was just an old laptop. My phone cost $200, but it's my actual cell phone. So I don't even consider that as a cost. The Steam controller, I just got... It's the Steam Summer Sale currently, so I got it at GameStop for $37.99, which isn't too bad for a new controller. And, you know, my computer is just my computer that I do work with, so I don't even count that as a cost. But, of course, you could probably, you know, get some cheap versions of these items if you want, like a cheap tablet, like an Android tablet for $50. Or you might have an old Xbox controller laying around that you want to use. So I can see how this could be like a very, very cheap option compared to like having to buy a laptop or something like that. So with that said, what does our new flow diagram look like? Well, we've got three things going on here. We've got three networks. And in this example, let's, uh, let's make this a little bigger. And control tab, I think it is. OK, perfect. So in this example, we've got three networks. And let's pretend that we're at the library with our phone and our controller, which I actually tested out, by the way. And we want to, you know, play a video game on our on our phone. And at home, we've got, you know, the usual setup. We've got the computer with Steam. We've got the VPN server. And that's at home. And finally, we have the internet that exists to bridge these things because that's kind of what the internet is. So let's go through the diagram really quickly. We've got video audio once again, and it goes from our computer with Steam that's at home, and it goes to the router, it goes out to the internet, and it has to come back to the router so that it can go through the VPN server, which then sends it back to the router, finally over the internet, and it comes back to the router for wherever we are, which is the library in this case and it gets sent to our phone so that we can actually see what's going on on our computer at home. So that was a mouthful, but l okay, let's say we see something and we need to provide some input, we need to jump. Well, we've got our controller, which is going, it's connected through Bluetooth to our phone, and we need to, let's say, pr press the X button. We do that and that gets sent to the phone through Bluetooth. And now the phone, changes this back to the regular Wi-Fi thing, which I'll talk about in a second. And it sends that input back to the library's router. And that goes through the internet and through the same process, it goes to our home router, to the VPN server, back to the router, back to the internet, back to the router, and finally to our computer with Steam running on it to provide that actual input. And I know this sounds like a lot, and it kind of is. 
And by the way, this is all happening, I think, over TCP IP, Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. I'm not entirely sure. I don't work for Steam, so I don't know how the app works. But just be aware that this all happens like over normal internet stuff. And this part happens over Bluetooth. But if you look at this, this kind of adds like a lot of latency to our game, which means that this is a pretty good trick, but it's probably a bad idea to play competitive games on your phone because there is like all this extra delay that's getting added because the things you see on your screen take a while to get there. And once you, you know, it, once it finally gets to your screen, then you actually have to press a button and it takes more time to actually get sent back there. So you can see how there's like a lot of lag in between that could cause problems. But for single player games, it's great. So with that said, I'm finally going to show you some gameplay of GTA 5 so you can see what it looks like. So here's the gameplay right now. So I'm at a Microsoft event and I should actually be doing some work right now. But you can see I've got my phone, a Steam controller, and a bottle of water. And I'm in the city. You can kind of see it and I should kind of be doing work. But instead, we are going to play GTA 5. Just to see how this works with the Steam Link controller and the VPN. So I'm playing, you can see aim, shoot, for the actual input from the Steam controller is going through Bluetooth and doing this. We're just going to play a few minutes to see how the frames are. Now I am actually kind of far away from Wi-Fi right now. So you, you can see there's a little bit of lag, but that's because, you know, this is like a huge floor actually. Do, do you want to see? This is like the size of the floor so I have no idea where the router is and there's other people on the Wi-Fi so even getting this frame rate ooh, that, that's me being bad with the Steam controller it's not input lag but you can see that we have significant frame loss like it, it's very choppy but I think if, if we were on good Wi-Fi this would be fine it's good enough to play for me I mean just to experience it you can imagine that if we weren't on like a really GPU intensive game like GTA, that this would be like much better. But yeah, see, so. So you can see that at the end of the video, it got a little bit choppy, but if you look back at the beginning of the video, it looked kind of okay. So I guess as the game went on, it got, it got a little intensive. And you know, GTA 5 in particular is a very demanding game from the hardware. So maybe that wasn't the best example to use, but it looked kind of fun. I think for like simple platformer games, it would be like very a viable option to use the Steam Link app and the VPN. So with that said, with a little bit of setup, we can play our Steam games anywhere in the world right from my phone and the Steam Link app with a few extra resources is a really useful tool. So this is what our two next things are going to be. First, I just want to say that make sure to follow me on social media and in this video, like, subscribe and leave comments if you kind of like this content because that'll let me know. And especially let me know if I should make a tutorial on setting up the VPN server because that's the kind of thing you want your hand held through. It's not very intuitive and believe me, it would be a lot easier if you just let me show you how to make an old laptop into a VPN server and how to set that up. And then you can kind of try this yourself or you can just, you know, look online for other resources and see if you can get it done. And also... The other thing is that I have another YouTube channel where I play video games for. There'll be a link below this video. Subscribe to that channel too because I'll probably do a few more gameplay videos of how things go just so you can see like a, a more detailed longer video to see how things go in the long run. So with that said, I'm Source Make, and that has been Steam Link App Gaming with a VPN anywhere in the world once again. So thanks for watching and happy gaming.